part of it's about the Bible and part of it's of course about where we add and what we're doing and what's going on around us. So I don't know how closely sometimes you look at the Bible, but if you look at it, there are certain parts of it which, well, aren't exactly always in the order that we would hope that they would be in, i.e. they're not always chronological. And when you look at sometimes the order really in chapter 17, 18, and 19, this that take place in this portion, doesn't always fit that direct tight chronology. And you think, well, maybe there's an issue with the ordering and maybe why are we focused on this issue with the ordering? And I'll put it to you this way, even us as modern Jews, we're not the first to notice it. Ibn Ezra in the Middle Ages noticed that there was something going on here and he wanted to explain and understand why is it that the Bible is talking about Amalek and Amalek really coming and killing the Jews. Um, and the entire scenario is repeated with a little bit more detail in the book of Deuteronomy. And right after it, we find this lovely interaction of Yitro helping lead the Jewish people, helping provide encouragement of understanding how are we going to govern ourselves and really ultimately teaching Moses some ideas about how to be a better leader and how to govern. Just a reminder who Yitro was, he was a Midianite priest and Moses married his daughter. And when we look at this, I think the juxtaposition, at least according to Ibn Ezra, was that there is something really important there. That juxtaposition and the focus on that was picked up by a modern biblical scholar, um, named Kazuto, and who also pointed out linguistically the connections between the Amalek incident and the Yitro incident or the Jethro incident. And I think in many regards, they reflect how do we interact with somebody outside of us? I'll remind you of a few interesting facts. The Israelites had just left Egypt. They had just literally not long before been slaves, been put under a burden of servitude and experienced so much pressure, so much hatred at the hands of Pharaoh. These were a people who didn't even know what they wanted, finally figured out that they wanted freedom really, um, freedom from oppression after initially thinking it was freedom of religion and only only are they really struggling to learn their identity and they're still trying to figure out a both who they are internally and b can we trust outsiders after all the most outsider that they had known was pharaoh and egypt and life was pretty oppressive and life was pretty hard and i think it's really a relevant question can we trust people who aren't part of the Jewish community? What should our relationship be? How do we interact with them? And I bring this up because after this summer where there's been lots of anti-Semitic incidences, this on the heels of Poway, this on the heels of a, of a shooting, horrible shooting, a tree of life, and then this past week, oftentimes I think it looks like we have a challenge wondering how do we relate to the non-Jewish world as Jews? Do we trust them? Do we not trust them? Are we, do we need to have our antennas on? Are we looking for something, some anti-Semitic statements up out of them? What if they say something that's, they don't even realize is anti-Semitic, but just as a statement of their bias? Well, I think if we look actually at what happened with Amalek, and Yitro, we realize that, well, Amalek did take advantage. Amalek, we know for sure what he did. Not only did was he aggressive with the Jews, he was extremely aggressive. He went after the most vulnerable, the people at the back of the line, the women, the children, the infirmed. Obviously, not somebody that we're supposed to trust. And we were taught afterwards, we can't allow that level of Maleficent, Maleficent, I can speak, into this world. We really need to aggressively deal with the Amaleks, the ones who attack us for who we are, attack us at our weakest moments. But just as we need to have that level both of suspicion and action toward Amalek, 
we also still need to be receiving and able to receive help. Able to see that the person in front of us might be a hetero moment. That person may be there to help us, to teach us how to live life just a little bit better. How do we better function as a governance? How can Moses be a better leader and maybe even a better husband and a better father? How can we learn? After all, we're taught in Pure Kevo, a Selecha Rab, find for yourself a teacher. And that person doesn't necessarily need to be Jewish. Today, one of my teachers who I only know through his works and his writings um, and his YouTube videos passed away, Titnat Han. And he is one of those people who really elevates the whole concept of mindfulness, not just within the Buddhist world that he has lived in, but also within simply the religious sphere. There are many people for whom he is somebody who we look to. I'm sure there are others for whom we can look at and say, I have learned from them and they have been a friend back to me. And I think that we can't always eye everybody with a level of suspicion. I think we need to have an eye toward our safety, an eye toward our security, absolutely. We are living in an age where there is increased polarization and increased suspicion. But that doesn't mean that needs to be our first response. Not everybody coming at us, after all, or wanting to engage with us is Amalek. Some of those people who want to engage with us are Hetros. Some of those people may be teaching us things. Some of those people may be helping us. And so I know that in response to last week's anti-Semitic incident in Texas, we may want to curl up into ourselves. We may not want to get out and communicate very much. And maybe it's reopened moments where you yourself have experienced anti-Semitism in your life and you're kind of reliving that in your own head and feeling and wondering why is this keep happening and why does it happen with increased frequency? And why is it that more and more Jews are reporting experiencing anti-Semitic moments and recognizing that according to the FBI, Jewish community receives the most um, hate-filled actions of any religious group in America. And so I don't want that, to, though, to prevent us from wanting to reach out, from wanting to build friendships, and wanting to have more moments of positive connectivity and loving kindness from strangers. After all, sometimes those strangers can give us amazing gifts. But if we're so suspicious, then we can't even receive them. If we can't even hear them, we're not going to be able to understand what it is that they're giving. And more important, if our heart is closed up like Pharaoh's was, and our heart is like stone, then we won't be able to receive the help that we might need at that moment. So just because some of us may be fearful, and I understand that, and some of us may be triggered and afraid, I wanna encourage us and recognize that I believe that there's a reason why Amalek is juxtaposed with Yitro in this portion. It's there to remind us not to respond like we might want to in fear, but to respond appropriately when it's Amalek. That deserves one very specific response. When it's Yitro, another one. But don't let ourselves become tainted and always be open to receiving things with love. Kenya Hiratzon, may this be God's will.